July of 2016, a force was unleashed on the world that nobody saw coming. A cultural phenomenon that turned the entire world into a game and opened up a whole new layer of reality to millions of people. What was the name of this technological marvel? Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is one of the fastest growing and most successful phone apps of all time, making over $2 billion for Niantic, the company behind the game. According to the app tracker App Annie, more than 380 million people were using the game at its height. That's one out of every 20 people on Earth. In case you were in a coma in 2016, first of all, welcome back. And secondly, Pokemon Go is an app that used the GPS tracker on your phone to lead you to go find Pokemon out there in the world. And when you got there, you could see the Pokemon in your phone seamlessly integrated with the environment around it. Kind of like a Snapchat filter, the phone presents to you a layer of reality on top of the reality that you're actually experiencing. Both of these are early examples of what we now call augmented reality, and is often the case these fun and frivolous uses of the technology underlie some very significant advancements that are going to really make huge changes in our lives in the coming years. Now long before augmented reality became a thing, there was virtual reality, which is something that's always kind of been right there on the fringes, it was always being promised as the next big thing, but never quite getting there. It was supposed to give us the ability to travel without traveling, to experience entirely new worlds, stand on stage at a concert with Rihanna, and walk the frozen surface of Pluto. Instead of just reading and imagining something, you could be there and experience it. And it was always about 10 years away. But there have been some huge advancements in that technology recently that have had some experts starting to believe that maybe his time has finally come. Welcome to the age of new realities, virtual and augmented. The question becomes, which one of these is going to have a more significant impact on our lives? The world is advancing faster than it ever has before. It's practically impossible to keep up with the technological advancement today. My advice, if you really want to keep track, would be to follow some smart, handsome YouTuber that follows this kind of thing, and make sure and click the bell so you get notified when they put out their videos. So at any given time, there's a plethora of new technologies to keep your eye on, especially if you're an investor and it's your job to know what's the next big thing. You see something that looks like the next big thing, you put your money into it, they use that money to become the next big thing, and it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And one of the things that investors are investing heavily in right now is virtual and augmented reality. The worldwide market for AR and VR products in 2018 is expected to be $17.8 billion, but by 2021, that's expected to go up to $215 billion. That's a lot more billion dollars. So companies are racing to be first and best to market with these devices. Facebook, Google, Apple, Samsung, HTC, Sony, Microsoft, Intel, Amazon, even Autodesk is getting in on the action. They're spending billions of dollars to advance this technology. Some of these are already on the market, some of these are just a glimmer in some tech billionaire's pants, but this technology is coming, and it's going to affect your life in some way. But when we talk about AR and VR, we're talking about two different things that both have their own strengths and weaknesses and uses, so let's talk about that for a second. Virtual reality is total immersion. You step out of the real world and you step into this game world or this experiential world, whatever it is, especially if you have headphones on, the real world falls away and you are totally immersed in this virtual one. Augmented reality kind of goes the other way. It doesn't want to take you out of the real world, it just wants to enhance it. It wants to apply a layer of reality on top of the reality that you're experiencing to augment it, if you will. Actually, if you talk to somebody my age and older, you might find that we're a little bit more subdued about virtual reality because we've seen all this happen before. We've seen the craze with virtual reality happen. Everything that we're hearing now, we heard a long time ago. We've seen this movie. In the late 80s and early 90s, we were told that VR was going to completely transform the way we lived our lives. It was going to change the way we studied, the way we watched TV, played video games, the way we watched movies. And hell, movies like The Lawnmower Man basically promised us superpowers through VR. But VR never really got beyond gaming, especially in arcade games like Virtuality, where you could put a sweaty helmet on your head that 50 other people had worn that day and spend five minutes in a virtual world while contracting the flu in the real one. Sega introduced a concept version of the virtual reality headset, but Nintendo actually released in 1995 the Virtual Boy, which was a huge flop. Maybe that's because the displays were only 224 pixels wide and only used one color, red. Plenty of V, not much R. Not to mention there were limited numbers of games available, and apparently the set was really uncomfortable to wear for long periods of time and too expensive for the average gamer, so there were lots of reasons why it didn't work out. Basically there was a lot of hype around VR in the 90s, but the technology wasn't ready to deliver on that hype. And that's the big difference between then and now. Today we can create photorealistic worlds and display them on high definition 3D screens and create immersive experiences that are almost indistinguishable from real life. The R is caught up to the V. 
Oculus Rift was the first company to really spur on the new VR craze in 2012 when they launched a massively successful Kickstarter campaign and then were bought by Facebook for $2 billion. Oculus is still one of the top players in the VR world along with HTC and PlayStation. These are what are known as tethered devices, meaning they are connected to a computer that actually does all the processing. This creates a much more robust experience but not much freedom of movement because you're tied down to a computer. There are also mobile headsets like the Samsung Gear VR and the Google Daydream View where you can just strap a phone in there and use the phone as a display and be able to walk around and do whatever you want. Now this is great for more mobility, sure, but the phone screens are not as detailed as the tethered versions and also the phone is doing all the processing so you don't have quite as much power as you would have with you know, the computer running things. But these are a good experience and they're a lot less expensive. Now let's switch to augmented reality. Does anybody remember when this started happening? We see it all the time now, we don't think anything of it, but this is actually really impressive technology. Think about it, it's happening in real time, it's tracking along with the camera movement, it goes underneath the players that are running on top of it in very fast, chaotic motions. This was a major breakthrough. And it's also one of the first cases of augmented reality. It's a way to seamlessly add information on top of a real world situation. The virtual first down marker first showed up in about 1998, and in the 2000s, developers started getting their hands on AR toolkits just in time for smartphones to become a thing. Some notable first early uses of AR were codes in print magazines and advertisements where you could point your phone at it and see extra information or an animation of some kind pop up in front of you. Volkswagen's Marta app gave service technicians the ability to see what repairs they need to make right in front of them as they do them. That was pretty cool. Over the years, more and more AR apps started showing up on our phones like Google Translate, which actually translates text right in front of you, which is a must for any travel situation, and plenty of games like the aforementioned Pokemon Go. Now ultimately these are all just whiz-bang toys and tools for phones, but if you really want to get into the promise of augmented reality, you got to get into wearable headsets. And for that, you have to talk about Google Glass. This was kind of the virtual boy for the augmented reality world. It was too expensive, did too little, and frankly, made you a target for a lot of douchebag jokes. But hey, it was the first, so credit where it's due. And just like Oculus Rift was the plucky new guy that started up the VR revolution, Magic Leap did that for AR technology. Magic Leap hit the scene in 2014, securing a $50 million investment in their new technology, which was the largest investment into AR at the time. And they promised to build a headset that would fill the space around you with augmented reality. Magic Leap uses a virtual retinal display technology that projects images directly onto your eye, giving the effect of 3D computer-generated images seamlessly integrated into the world around you. Just months ago, they announced their first product, which is called the Magic Leap One, which looks like a pair of cyberpunk sunglasses that are connected to a round, circular pocket computer. It looks like a disc man from the 90s. It's not available to the public just yet, but just last week, they started sending them out to developers to create software for it, and apparently they're being super secretive about it. Part of the deal of sending it to a developer is that they have to keep it when they're not using it in a locked safe. Pretty strict. Now what are the chances you're gonna go to the store sometime in the next couple of years and see people walking around like this? It's not very likely. But that doesn't mean it's not useful. Imagine having multiple computer screens without the computer screens. Say you're working on your laptop and you want to pull up another screen, you need a little bit more space, maybe you want to watch a YouTube video while you're photoshopping something, you can just throw another screen up there and just keep going. Want a bigger TV? You can have a TV as big as the wall. You can have screens all over your house if you want. Put a virtual grocery store list projected right on your refrigerator or be able to control the thermostat with virtual thermostats in any room of the house. I mean, the list goes on and on. And one of the most promising things about this is you can share that virtual augmented space with other people, just like you would normally. If that big screen TV on your wall, you can watch it along with somebody else. It'd be just like it was a real TV. Assuming they're wearing one as well, of course. And this is the advantage of AR over VR. It allows you to still interact in the real world. In fact, it just adds to the real world. The ultimate goal for this technology is to get them down to the size of just a regular pair of glasses, so it would look like you're just walking around wearing normal glasses. But these are the first iterations of this technology. I mean, remember what the first cell phones look like? Imagine smart glasses that you could pair through Bluetooth to your phone, that you could wear out and about, and it would just look like you're wearing glasses just like anybody else, but those glasses are feeding you real-time information in front of what you're seeing. As you're driving, the glasses could show you where to take turns in turn-by-turn -turn navigation. As you're driving around, you get information about buildings and landmarks in the area. You could go clothes shopping and be able to just look at the clothes and see what you would look like in them. And another term that you hear when talking about this space is mixed reality. And the difference between augmented reality and mixed reality, it's, it's a bit murky, but the general consensus is that 
Uh, augmented reality basically just projects images on top of what you are experiencing, whereas mixed reality actually interacts with real reality. For example, a surgeon might overlay a CT scan of a patient's body over that patient while they're working on them, and the CT scan would you know, uh, change court in a corresponding way as he's operating. The Microsoft HoloLens is touted as an example of mixed reality, but honestly, to me, AR and MR look pretty much like the same thing. I think they're kind of used correspondingly, and that mixed reality is kind of a term that's going away. People tend to be gravitating toward the term uh, augmented reality instead. But back to the big question between AR and VR, which ones are going to change our lives the most? And I'm gonna put my foot down and say, I don't know, but my bet would be on augmented reality. And the reason I say this is that when you look at, say, what's happened with our cell phones over the last 10 years, they have become more and more an extension of ourselves into our lives, into our worlds. We've been, in a way, augmenting reality with our phones this whole time. I see augmented reality as just an extension of what we're already doing with cell phones. And looking back at the trend that's been going on this whole time, I don't think that's something that's gonna go away anytime soon. And this doesn't mean that virtual reality doesn't have its place. There are many wonderful applications for virtual reality, not just in gaming, but also in therapy. Creating an immersive environment in which somebody with OCD or phobias can face their fears and their limitations in a safe place is really helpful. There are even studies where stroke victims and people with paralyzed limbs have learned how to walk again by using virtual reality headsets to visualize their feet stepping one in front of the other and by kind of creating those neural pathways in their brain, it helps them to be able to do that with the real thing. But ultimately, I think that we are a social species. I think that we crave interaction with other people and that's something that VR kind of takes away or at least creates a barrier between. But I could be wrong about that. I would love to hear what you think in the comments. But maybe an even bigger question though is, is this a good thing? Science fiction is riddled with concepts of devices just like this. Smart contacts with AR functionality are already in the works. And of course there are companies like Neuralink that are working on brain implant technology. So ultimately you might be able to have an AR experience just naturally, however you want, whenever you want, 24 hours a day. Actually it's probably more like 16 hours a day unless you don't sleep, in which case you're probably seeing things that aren't there anyway. But doesn't this approach the level of some kind of black mirror hellscape? Doesn't it open us up to constant, you know, advertising and manipulation? And can our brains even handle that level of stimuli? I mean, on one hand, we've adapted over the last 20 years to more and more increasing levels of stimuli in our lives. And we keep thinking we're gonna reach a breaking point, but we never do. But maybe there is a breaking point out there. Maybe there's a point where we just can't quite handle that level of information anymore. Or maybe our brains are powerful enough to adapt and handle it. You know, maybe the way that we can't imagine living without cell phones now is the way that people in the future will see us and can't imagine living without constant AR information going into their brains at all time. The more our technologies and lifestyles start going into this state of constant stimuli, the more important it is for us to take breaks and give our brains a rest from all that. You know, walk the dog, meditate, just, just take a little time out of every day to just take a break from the stimuli and let your brain kind of do what it needs to do might be one of the most important things we can do for ourselves. Which brings us back to Pokemon Go. One of the coolest things about Pokemon Go was that it got people out of the house. It sort of gamified the world and brought people together. It introduced people I'd never met before. It took people that hadn't been spending enough time together and gave them something to do in a cool and interesting way. And I mean, what's the point of technology if it's not bringing us together like that? So if that's the future of AR and mixed reality, count me in. Thanks for watching this video. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic, your favorite VR and AR apps and uh, games and stuff that you've learned to do with it, which one you think will be more interesting and more impactful to our lives in the future. Uh, talk about it down in the comments. While you're at it, hey, go check out some shirts, cool shirts at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts at the store. You can find this, you can find one that looks like this. They're a lot of fun. Go check them out, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Also a quick plug for my side hustle, Canker Boy. If you get canker sores and mouth ulcers on a monthly basis, this is a vitamin supplement that you can take that will prevent them from occurring. Works in about 75% of people. You get a free, a risk-free trial to start off with. You can try it for two months. If it doesn't work, you'll get your money back. Just go to cankerboy.com, try it out for yourself. And a big shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon who help keep the lights on around here. I cannot thank you enough for your support and what you're doing. There's some new people that have joined the tribe. I want to call them out real quick. Hang on, let me see if I can get this right. There's uh, Extreme Auto Diagnostic. It's a weird name for somebody to give you. Uh, Ilya Diallo, Karadoc Robertson, Jayahar Duda Koderu, uh, Michael Vaivala, Fabian Khan, uh, Michael McAuliffe, Karen Parsons, Jeff L. Allen, David Guerrero, 
Shayris Shankar, David Biondi, Michael Cox, Christopher Block, Hayden Kunn, uh, Dion Calloway, Dirk Hempel, Philip Fuchs, uh, Dean R. Kohler, Matthias Becher, Tico Weinberger, <laughs> Anthony Burks, James, David Ag, Hans, and Matt Lipsky. Wow, thank you guys so much. That's, uh, that's a lot of people this week. Um, if you would like to join, get some perks like behind the scenes stuff, secret vlogs, and other kinds of things, and hear me totally murder your name on camera, you can go to patreon.com slash answers the joke. Please like and share this video if you liked it, and if this is your first time here, I invite you to check out my other videos where I talk about topics similar to this, and if you like those, I encourage you to subscribe. I come out with videos just like this every Monday. All right, now you guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you back here next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.